Mm. I think some people will argue that this will be a situation of uh, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, they, we also know that, you know, when you speak to some professors these days, you have to ask, where did they do their thesis? Absolutely. You know, so there's also that question of whether or not te the lecturers, the teachers are also putting out their best and whether or not they also are earning the dignity which they deserve. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's look at what has happened right now in Kaduna State. What was your reading? of uh, the scenario when you saw what played out there? Well, you know, in, in Nigeria, uh, public news, current news kind of create alarm. So people when you hear about 20, 22,000 or 10,000 people, teachers not being able to pass perhaps the most basic rudimentary test for even students, it's shocking. But for me, to be frank, I didn't quite feel a sense of shock because previously I, I've done some work on education reform. And what I, one thing I, I knew is that the, the, the decay is deeper than we think. I mean, this is not Kakadna isolated. If you do the same thing across the states, you will be horrified at what you get. Some states will be better off than others, but essentially, what I felt was, look, this is a symptom of a systemic decay. And now, let's watch our policymakers and managers, how they manage it. We they take it as episodic issue and then deal with it politically, maybe to maximize political capital or for or opponents to to attack the incumbent or those who are running the system. Or would they see it as a window, a lens into how the system has totally generated? Now look at it this way. Those uh, thousands of teachers in Kaduna are victims, unfortunate victims of a system. They are also scapegoats because they have been found out. Perhaps there are many others who are not yet found out across the states. So we can look at it as a point of view of this is scandal. Cardinal State is ruined. Or we can see it as an opportunity to really now say, what's going on here? For too long, we know that there's a, a rot. And that rot is not just about the formal process of teaching, certification. It's also about the value system behind everything. So for example, I know of a university in this country, in this city, to, uh, to tell you the truth, a private university, I heard a story of somebody who was supposed to be promoted to a professor, head of department. And they checked and they didn't have, he, he didn't originally, she didn't originally have a basic secondary school. And so she got admitted, remedied that, supposedly, got it after admission. And so if you look at the point of that professor, so from day one, somebody entered into a position they are not qualified to enter, either politically or helped by a big Nigerian. And then they keep progressing to the level of their incompetence. So how did these people get recruited in the first place? It could be another political windfall for people and they say, okay, let's get our people in. There are people today who are using other people's certificate. And so somebody told me, a head of department of a public institution, that somebody came to him and said, look, I want to change all my names. So from Sam Amadi to, let's say, Philip uh, Musa, and the guy was alarmed. Why all the two names? And then the issue came out to are you sure this guy didn't take somebody's certificate to enroll into this job? And then the person who has the certificate now wants it. So in order to create a legal distinction between his past and his present, he changes his name. The, all this, what this tells us, all, what this tells us is that, look, we are dealing with an endemic problem of loss of value, system of recruitment, of progression, based on verifiable certificates. So if you're not even sure of the certificate you are carrying, how do we, how are we show the, the information inside your brain? So essentially, what comes at this is that, look, this is just a lens to see the rot, number one. Two, the question now comes back to, what do you do with these guys? What do you do with these guys who are both victims and scapegoats as the case, and corporates themselves as well? Because if you're a teacher for this long and couldn't pass basic tests for primary school st uh, students, then we expect, honestly, that you opt out look for some. So they're not just victims of a systemic uh, uh, decay, they are also uh, guilt, guilty parties because they contributed their in their line law and taken advantage of what they obviously didn't earn. So two ways. First, they are victims. What has caused it? Why are they victims? Because they, they come out of a system that has lost every uh, anchoring on value, on reality. Certification is a problem. Even the way we get into admission, there's a problem. So it starts from the one. Some people have gone through the process, they go into admission with, with fake certificate, with fake process. They pass through, helped all the way. They emerge and they enter into public service, they enter into teaching, they enter into ministries, in fact, enter into great sensitive jobs, and they are running it, perhaps leveraging on people who are competent. So 
if you look, if you map out all these variables, now you now see that really this is a real problem that perhaps should be an opportunity to dig deeper into both the education sector and the whole value sector system of efficiency, merit base that underwrites our political economy.